Yo, what's up guys? It's uh, IG Career Questions with Nigel, uh, and here I've got something very, very important. This is five new, well, replacement uh, SAS drives for my server, so I'm going to get this out of the package, and then we're going to put it, and I'll show you over here. Yeah, don't look over there. Uh, so, these ones, uh, these 300 gigabyte ones are going to be replaced, there's five of them. One of them isn't labelled, and they're going to go in there. Uh, ignore the mess of the cables, so I'll get them unboxed. Um, but first, I'm probably going to check to make sure my uh, VMs are not running, and that this is actually on, because it's off at the moment. And I just make sure I've got backups of some of the important VMs, and then I'm going to destroy the RAID array, and then build the new one with the with the new, uh, new terabyte, because they're one terabyte. And then I'll make another RAID for the 300 ones that are here. So, catch you in a minute. So as you can see, I've just started it up now. Just gonna give it a minute. It makes a hell of a racket, I'll let you listen. So I'm gonna wait for that to get started up and then we'll jump on to the host and just make sure we've got backups. So a good procedure to follow. And then we're gonna destroy the radar array using iDRAC. And more on that in a minute. Okay, so now I'm on the computer. I'm gonna to connect to my Hyper-V, which I should have already be done. And then we're going to see you know, what VMs I've got. And I've sort of already backed them up, but I'll just walk you through the process. It's good to see, I think. So here's my Hyper-V. So I've got DC and Apo, or, yeah, Apo 1 and DC 00, because I obviously couldn't count that day. So we've also got, uh, let me just pull it up a second. I've also got the backups, which I can show you. So here, uh, they're just the backups in here. So I've got the hard disk here, and then the actual Hyper-V information. All I did to do that was just sort of come over here, go to export, and then just I select where I wanted them to go. So these are my only two VMs really that run. There are other ones, but I've got rid of them. I don't, don't really need them. Uh, I'm doing this because when I rebuild the RAID array, because my RAID array at the moment is uh, RAID 6, but there's five disks that are like 300 gig and then the other six are terabytes so they're all running at 11 disks at two, 286 I think it is after sort of the sectors have been made up. So I've got those uh, so what we're going to do now is just shut the machine down and then we'll hop back over to sort of the camera or install them, install the drives and then I'll configure the RAID array and walk you through that. So let's get to it. Back. I just thought it'd be good for you to see. So it's like virtual console, and there's a bit of information about the machine, which you probably won't be able to see. But uh, it's good to see, it's iDRAC 7. So what I'm gonna do is pull up the virtual console, which is sort of a remote system that you can use to control the server without it even really being on, in theory. Uh, so what you can do, what you, what you have is you have a card, an iDRAC card, and it connects in. As long as that's connected, so as long as you've got internet through that iDRAC port, it will work. So what I'm going to do is do control or delete. So I'll log in. And then we're just gonna shut we're just gonna shut those VMs down first. If they're not already, I just double check. Yeah, we're gonna shut down and shut down. So wait for those to shut down. Shouldn't take very long. There we go. And then this one, that yeah, okay. There's, there's not really much going on them. So those are shut down. So then I want to shut down the server. So that should now shut down. Takes a few minutes. So. Now that's sh shutting down, once it's shut down, I'll uh, hop over to the camera and we can go through unpacking the RAID box uh, that the drives are coming, and and then we can pop them in the install and then we get to rebuilding the array. So see you in a sec. So I've sort of half opened the box here. It's going to be very fun to actually get off. These always are. Okay, so I've sort of opened the box already just because I tried uh, earlier, but these, um, these are the drives. A bit of a pain to get into some fancy polished iron because who doesn't love that? And then just that's five of them. Anyway. 
Okay, so I got them out. If you see, I made a bit of a mess of the uh, wrapping, never mind. So these, as you can see, are SAS 1 terabyte, 7.2K. They are slightly lesser RPMs than, uh, than the 300s, but they're gonna sort of be moved along, if you will. Because um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out and move them along, because, or yeah, I'm gonna line them up so all the 1 terabytes are first, followed, and then, and then all the 300, and then there's a, a few, an SSD or two at, at the end which is obviously where I put the backups for these VMs. So let's, uh, I'm gonna get go over here. I'm just gonna, it's all off, obviously. Um, there's power running through it, but you can actually hot swap these. But um, so what we got, we got one, two, three, four, five. So those, these are all, um, so we just click it. You just take it out. Like so. So we'll just put them up there for a minute. Ooh. Stack them. Just make sure that's the right one. Yep. So then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then right at the end there. You see, that's the two hundred and hundred. Let's get that out of the way. One hundred and twenty-eight. I don't know if the camera's going to focus. I don't think it's going to focus, but it's the one hundred and twenty-eight one. So those are out. So then, what we're going to do? We come here. So. We sort of, so you have to do it this way because of the camera. Do it like that. Just slide them in. Just make sure that's tight. It is. So we're just going to do this with each of them. So I will come back when I pop. Right, so I popped in all the one terabytes now. I've got these to put in, but I just thought I'd show you like one or two. It's a bit of an awkward angle. These cables need to be longer so I can actually uh, <laughs> do it. But what I can show you is you just pull these out ever so slightly. There's like a little tab on them. To be honest, I think you need both of these tabs to it. There we go. You just put them out, and they're just they're just an empty caddy. You see, I'm not even. I don't. Yeah, we don't normally put dryers in there. They're just just empty. So what I'll do is I'll uh, get all the the other five out, and I get those in, and then come back and show you what it's like, and then we can get pegging it onto our drive, onto the virtual console. Uh, the raid's probably already destroyed. It's probably because we pulled all the drives out, most of them. Um, we pulled like five out of one raid array, so uh, it's all in one raid anyway. So it will. Um, definitely be knackered so we're gonna have to just it's probably deleted it or it's probably aired out so we just need to delete them all make sure they all come online and then get them in a two red arrays one for the one terabytes one for the remaining 300 gig which are here and then actually one which i'll leave alone is the 128 gig and read one so i'll be back in a second okay right so they are actually all in now so terabyte 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 so there should be a good amount of them we got them there. So we've actually got, should have like 10, 11, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 16, 17, 18. Okay, so I've seen that. Let's get over to the computer, get on the virtual console, which should still be open, and uh, power it up, get into the RAID config, and then go from there. Okay, so we are now on the virtual console through iDrack. Uh, it's just booting up at the minute, so you can already hear it in the background. It's making a I mean, racket. They are like quite noisy. Probably a future video is to swap out the fans. They're quite good. Uh, so let's just give it a minute. Uh, if it takes too long, I'll skip ahead uh, for you, just so you're not sat here twiddling your thumbs. Ooh. I think that bar is slightly out of date. Probably needs doing, but uh, probably a good time. I mean, it's basically a fresh build, other than the domain controller and the app server, which 
Mainly it's just because I set up some wiki stuff and they took a while, quite a while, to, to do that. So, just give it a minute. I'm probably going to skip ahead, so we'll do that now. Okay, so we're at the configuration utility, let's put control R. So, now we have the, uh, <laughs> so these are the raid groups. He says, I told you it's raid six. So I don't want to delete the entire disk group. I just want to delete, um, no, I don't. So I want to delete this one, uh, not that one. And see how I said, I, because I pulled them all out, they're all unconfigured, you see? So basically the raid is gone. <laughs> so raid one, I want to leave. So we want to do F2 and we want to delete virtual disk. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. So there we go. So we've got 148 gig. We do not want to delete that one because um, that's where all the backups are and a few other bits I've got on there. So now we want to do a new disk. So, so we do F2. And I might have to do it this way. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on a sec. There we go. Create a new VD, which is a virtual disk. We want to. Oh, want to make it RAID five, just for storage means more than anything. And we want all the nine hundred thirty-one. So this should should say ten because. If you know anything about my computers, it will count from zero. So, so it's 9,000, and we're going to call this primary e primary raid. Uh, okay, that's fine. Call it primary raid. Yep, that's fine. Uh, hold on. Recommend the one you said. Oh, okay. Right, it's because they are. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's because those are the ones that I. Uh... So let's just do initialization, start initialization. Okay, so that's those are now function. So we go up to here, create new VHD. Again, we're going to go with RAID 5, and we're just going to do these ones. Uh, and we're going to, I don't really know what this is going to be for. Uh, I could have them as backups, so I'm going to have it secondary. Uh, because it leaves it sort of open to interpretation. Uh, okay, so let's just cancel a sec. Okay. And we want to start the initialization yep, of those. Okay. So that should be all that's needed for the raid side. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to see if I can connect virtual media. Okay, we're getting on there. We're getting on there. I'm just looking on the screen I've got. All right, so we're just getting the boot manager. And we should be able to boot to it because it is mounted as a drive. So, so it's found the three, uh, the three virtual drives, which is the one we put all, some of the data on, and then the other one, the other two that we created the primary and the secondary. So let's just give it a minute. 
Should uh, come with a nice Dell logo in a minute. Just telling us it's launching UEFI. Uh, UEFI um, is a lot quicker, generally. Um, interestingly enough, you put USBs in the front of a server to mount using UEFI. At least with some of the Dells and the older R7s, R700s, they are not always the quickest. It always can be a bit slow. So we're just waiting for this. If it takes much longer, I'll skip ahead for you. Because I won't be watching on YouTube just to watch some loading screens. I actually want to see the uh, the how-to. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to pause this and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so, right. Better late than never. So we have a few different options here. Oh. Ah, oh, crap. Hold on. I will sort this. Okay, right. So I've uh, I've just rebooted it. So so it now. Uh, well, so the next boot it was set to virtual CD, which I'm now there. So I just want to hit enter on this. This should hopefully load up the files. This bit can take a while, but uh, once we get in here, uh, I'll sort of explain my thinking behind how I install it. Because I've got three raids, uh, two of which I've created, so probably the smaller of the of the two raids, the 300 gig set of disks, uh, there's five of them, uh, will be the one that I install Windows on. And I'll just have like the C drive at like 200 and then leave the rest unallocated, so I can always create more disks, and then the bigger of the RAID arrays, the like nine, basically 9 terabytes, that will be my data drive, my VMs, and then the, the leftover space I can always actually run backups, but I'm probably going to look at a NAS, so it's taking a bit of time. Um, I'll pause it right here and then we'll come back when it's sort of loaded up. Right, be back soon. Okay, right, so uh, it took a while, but uh, this is now ready to install, so we're going to go next, install. I'll just give it a minute to run the setup. Should have some disks in here in a minute. Okay, and we want 2019 desktop. Okay, except the terms because no one reads them. <laughs> we do custom. Uh, so here we go. We see we got uh, a partition drive one, partition two, which is called secondary. Uh, so that's the 148. That's the uh, that we want to leave this one essentially. This is my. Um, so I just want to check session options a sec. Uh, I'm just going to apply that so then it's like that. Um, hold on. I'm going to change that back a second. Change to Linux. So this is the one where we put all the backup. So it's all, still got the free space, you can see. This is the massive one. So this is the one, which is the 5 300 gig uh, RAID 5. We lose about a disk. So you want to put this on drive two. This is where you want to put Windows. And we still got get seven or eight hundred gig left to play with, even if we have it at like two hundred gig. So this will now go to install uh, Windows. I uh, won't make you sit here and wait. So we'll pause it and then we will come back once we're sort of at uh, sort of the first time boot menu, and then we can go through that. Okay, so now I'm back. It's been a few days since uh, the, the cut to the installation, but I figured out the installation, uh, so that's now progressing. 
So we're just going to wait for this to boot up. I did manage to get it installed, but then I had to go back and change some other stuff. So once we've installed the OS, this is what it will look like. So we just hit next for me. So we're just going to do a password. That'll do. So this is um, just what we want. So control delete. So we need to get logged in a second. Now we'll just stay in the, on the console viewer, um, the virtual console for the moment, and then I'll pop Team Viewer on or something, and or our RDP over once we've configured everything. <coughs> so. So we'll just do, we're just going to bring up command attack and then we can do the config. Uh, so we got the name, which I will change. Or, so we'll just call it host01, just something simple. Uh, I'm not going to restart yet because there's a few other things I want to do. Now, uh, since I've sort of made the video, I've actually done some cabling and I'll pop a photo up uh, in a second. You should see that. So now I've actually, as you can see, uh, so we're back to the screen here, you can see that I've actually got quite a few. This one isn't connected, um, but I'll check that in a minute. Um, so what the first thing I do is I always turn on Nick Teaming. So Nick Teaming allows you to create teams for the different sort of physical network adapters. So if one port or a whole network card fails, you've still got another network card or however many you've got. So you sort of group them together. So the idea is if you virtualize a server, you have one team, Nick team with say two, two ports or two adapters ideally for the host. And then another Nick team with you know, two adapters for the VM. So if either one fails, you've still got a little bit of, you know, bit of availability. So that's the idea behind it. I'm just going to come in here and check to make sure Nick one's disconnected, Nick four. Okay, hold on a sec. I'm just gonna pause the video a sec and I'll come back because I need to see why those are disconnected because they're all connected. It's probably something to do with the, the switch. Right, I'm back. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it was the switch that was doing it. I changed it sort of once I put those cables in the other day between the last video, between the installation and, and this one. And uh, <laughs> The config and save, so I just have to set them on the right network. Uh, so those are now working. So now it should these are all available. So there's actually <laughs> there's actually two network cards on here. Uh, I'll just show you a second, just so you can see the thought process. It's just a test server, so it's not really it doesn't really matter what I do with it. So as you can see, one says Intel Gigabit ET port number two. So that means obviously it goes from one, two, three, four. So that's then. So there's eight ports, uh, or nine if you include the iDRAC port, which is how we're connected, which it isn't obviously you can't see it from this the software level for obvious reasons. And then the other one is a broad Broadcom. This is like the add-on that you would get. You'd normally get this with the server when you can when you buy it. This is a set of four ports, and then there's another network card with another set of four ports. So given that, what I would do is have two. One team has the two and then the other team would have one and two so that'd be one team and then that one would be another so then you have two ports on each network card so you'd have a total of four ports so if any one network card dies you still have redundancy so if if that network card dies well yeah if um <laughs> if this network card dies so let's say all the ports die you've still got two from here, uh, so you'd have sort of, it depends which one's died to be honest, but if like all three, four die, and we have two on the host and two on the VMs, then we're sort of sorted, and then vice versa. So that's the thought behind that. So that's normally the first thing I configure when I do a host. So we'll do one, two, 
one, two, that's the host. So we then add to a new team. And we'll call this host. And let's we'll just do that. Okay, now it will error out. So we just ignore that for a minute. One, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, so we could just do that. Add to a new team. And we'll call this VMs. Like so. So how you see, so what you see is is if any of those these die, so three and four and one and two die, they've still got Nick one, Nick two, Nick three, and Nick four, seven, both those VMs. So we're sort of covered in that regard. So it's just gonna give us a minute, it's gonna take a minute. So that's now all active, so you can see it's changed to okay. And this one for the VMs, it will just take a minute. Uh, so just give it a second. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. There you go. See, now it's all switched to OK. Now this is probably having a whinge about stuff. So then what we do, get a in the settings. You see how it's gone to normal. So you change it up to options. Now these are gonna. We want to set different VMs. So for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna set these. And I'll show you where to set them. Then I'll set them and then sort of resume the video after, it's not something you really need to see, but you would just come in here, you know, put your IPs, put your DNS on each of the adapters, so then you have two IPs effectively to access it. Uh, now, it depends on what the server's doing, but you could even segment these on different networks. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, and this is just a test server at home lab, it's not a production server really, that has anything on it, so it just more has the labs, um, and later I'm going to do SCCM and SQL and that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to set these and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back. Now these are uh, these are all set. So with that set, uh, so let's just come out of here. So you can see Nick Team is enabled. Um, it says it's signed by DHCP, but we've actually set it statically. So after this, uh, I'm going to enable virtualization. I've named it, so I'm going to have to restart this for the name change I did earlier. So I may as well get these Hyper-V installed. And then as part of Hyper-V installation, you would have to reboot it anyway. So let's just do that. Yeah, let's uh, ignore that IP. Let's just get out of the way. I'm just going to... So, we want a Hyper-V, I was just checking to make sure it's getting the correct IPs. Don't need to enable anything else. Um, now, we want the to use this one. That's why we set up before, so then we don't have to worry about this. Um, so we can turn this on and use Kerberos. We won't, this won't be used for anything like that. So the default location, ah, so this is something I want to sort of show you. So you obviously want to set this something that other than your other drive. Now you remember we created two additional raids. So we've got the secondary disk here that's got our Hyper-V on there. So that's what we're going to restore later on. But so what we want to do, the other disk, or set of disks, I should say, the you know the eleven ter terabytes, which has created roughly nine thousand three hundred nine gig, uh, is online, and you can see it's a it's obviously set to a GPT disk because it wants us to convert to MBR, which is correct. So then we want to do a new simple volume, and probably just give it the F. F drive. I'm just going to call it data because it may be used for other stuff, but primarily data to host VMs. And we hit finish. Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't show. That's weird. Okay, right. So the C drive is 215 gig, but I've got over 890 gig still there. But I'll leave that because I might want to use that in some other way. 
it could be to extend the C drive, highly unlikely. I will also make a backup drive um, like using Veeam, like Community Edition, or some other free software. So we'll leave that there. So that's just a general review, just the thought process behind why we've done it that way. Normally you would separate the data. This is for the VMs primarily. This is just a secondary drive for bit odd bits, maybe configs. That's again on its own separate array with two SSDs, so it can only maintain one disk failure and, and so on. Um, obviously these are all RAID 5s because it's, it is obviously, there's a fair few disks, but I'm sort of um, prioritizing how much space I have. So that's why I've gone RAID 5. Again, you RAID 10 or RAID 6 would be better, but RAID 6 is not as quick, but yeah. So it's, yeah, RAID 10 is probably a good go, but I want as much space I can get. If I was obviously putting this production, I would sort of alleviate between RAID 6 to, or and RAID 10, depending on sort of the, the requirements of whoever that was for, the client generally. So now we've initialized that disk. We want to go in here and I'll create one called hyper oh, hyper v and in here i'm just going to create it called virtual hard disk oh, virtual hard disks now when we create this these folders and point them when we import the vms we can actually move them to their own folders which is what i prefer to do to keep it all nice and organized i should just get a jumbled of all the different disks so unless you name the VHDs correctly um, it can be a bit of a pain and then just keeping it organized is the is key I think so but we're just doing this so we everything's clearly labeled there'll be another two folders in it for each VM and we'll create one for snapshots as well don't think it's gonna ask us for that still getting used to my keyboard so so we just want to browse for this. So this is for the hard disk, isn't it? Yes. So it's that F drive that we made and then hard disks. Okay, the virtual configuration files. This is just the defaults, essentially. This is this is just the defaults. So if you don't set these to anywhere else or when you create the VMs or if you were to move VMs, not to move them, then this is what where they would go. So machines. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So restart server automatically, yes, install. Now for memory, this should restart. So we've got a name change and we've also got a, a few other things as well that will happen. Mainly the feature and the name change of the computer. So it'll change from that. So from Win-1S7 FO, A4 BM J3S. Very, very easy to remember, of course. And then that will change to host dash a1 or hyphen a1. So I will just give this a minute and then I shall be back once it's sort of near completion and we need to reboot. Okay, so it's just rebooted now. So it's just gonna go through configuring the memory um, does sometimes take a bit of a moment. You can probably hear it spin up, possibly. So let's just wait for this. Now, these are these are just the best practices from sort of what I believe and also what Microsoft recommend. Um, there's many different ways to do this. So obviously, the point of it is just to give it a baseline for you to play with. It's not necessarily meant to be a cardinal rule, but um, this is sort of the, the process I follow with regards to just setting up a server. Anything sort of past this point after the VMs are restored is merely down to sort of what you're trying to achieve. But obviously having separate disks for the VM, separate disks for the C drive, and then separate disks for anything else you feel is necessary. If you're not virtualizing it, then you would do the same thing for like data drives for files and things like that. Um, but I always, with Microsoft licenses, anything you buy, you would get, you get two free VMs with every Microsoft server standard license anyway. Um, at least currently at the time of this recording on the 16th of April 2021 um, anything more than that you have to pay per machine um, so the Microsoft recommended viewing having more than say 8 to 10 VMs more than more than that then you should definitely look at data center and data center allows you to have unlimited VMs but it's quite a bit more um, it's normally between like four to six thousand dollars or where I am it's like 
about three three and a half thousand pounds um depending on the version obviously but at the current you know time give or take a week those, those are the prices um which is absolutely adamant if you have a big big server or a set of five servers and they all have 25 vms on you don't really want to pay seven eight nine hundred pounds for each of these vms 75 vms that's a lot so it's a big cost saving in big environments for the smaller environments two vms and a host is um is sort of all that's really needed um the ones we're running will be just be an evaluation anyway and we can extend them by quite a, quite an amount so they'll be fine for what we want to achieve so it's just started up The structure of the video, I apologise if it's slightly erratic, obviously I've had to do it over a few days, so I'm just obviously piecing everything together, so obviously in the further videos they will be done sort of over prolonged, uh, shorter periods of time, more prolonged singular periods, so they'll be done, you know, several hours in, in sort of one day, so they won't be as uh, strung together, so I hope you enjoy the video, or are enjoying it, um, don't forget to leave me a comment, thumbs up, if that's even a thing anymore. And if you're enjoying what you like, obviously it's probably the first video, so uh, subscribe, that, that always helps. And comment anything you'd like to see me do or walk through technically or just generally about sort of IT related questions. Especially anything with like Microsoft Windows, um, Office 365, happy to uh, talk about that if it helps you guys out. always takes us long when you're sat here waiting it's always the longest like five minutes of your life okay we're now booing up <laughs> right I'm gonna get logged in and then I will come back. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, it's come back, got back to the installation now. I managed to connect on RDP, so it gets a little bit higher resolution. Uh, just making sure you guys can see that. So. Just wait for it to conclude, and then we can get Hyper-V. Those VMs on, we can import them, which is relatively easy, and I'll also show you how to move them to, like, if you want to move them to that data drive in the right format, which I probably would want to do, um, and then get them run up and running, and then get rid of any old files, and then get rid of the old ones on the that secondary RAID, and then start them up. Make sure we can log in as a domain. And then we've basically restored it. I will do later videos and I'll set up a domain if that's what you, if that's what you want to see. But uh, there's plenty of videos about that. But I'm yeah happy to go through it. Just let me know in the comments, um, and I'll, I'll get on that. There we go. Right, so that's actually worked. Excellent. So we can you can find Hyper-V in one of two places. You can find it in the administrative tools um, section of the control panel, or you can just come up here and. Uh, and go here. But a lot of people prefer the administrative tools because it's not it's when the server stand up it's quicker to get there than it is to get here. So host one. There is no virtual machines found, which is expected. So you know how we exported when we right clicked and we had export on the machines when we had them. So we now want to import them, obviously. Um, so we went to select the fold folders. So it's on the secondary. It's on Hyper V. We'll do the DC first. Um, we select, yep, uh, what was that? Ah, that's the day that it was created. So I'm just going to register it, use the existing ID, just to keep everything as much as I can. If <coughs> this was a VM that I exported and then re-imported as a new, like an, a secondary machine, then I would create a new one, but I'm just going to use that. <coughs> now, it's going to have a whinge because it can't find the Ethernet switches. <coughs> so, what I will actually do is cancel this and create that switch. <coughs> mm. 
so this is the number two. I'm just going to check that and make sure, but that is the right one because that's the one we selected in the installation. So I do believe it's number two. Yeah, number two. Okay, so that's fine. So we just want to call it VMs external main switch team two. This may kick us out for the minute. It may. Shouldn't do. You can always tell if it does because these buttons still working. Which they are still working, so that's good. Excellent. So when we import them, it will we'll probably whinge about it because it's probably a slightly different naming convention. But I've done that on purpose so you can sort of see how it, you know how to name them sort of with a good amount of information. So register now. Just wait for us to come in. So, sort of talking about why I'm restoring this. Obviously, I'm restoring the DC because that has all the domain, uh, the current domain that <coughs> some of my test machines are on. So, I want to restore that. It's just a process to follow. And the Apo One has some key test software on it. Um, mainly just like some wiki stuff I'm testing, uh, which I may or may not do a video on in the future. If you want to know, you know what to do. Hit the comments below. Um, so it was just a lot of lot of work to do that and uh, as much as I like a challenge I didn't want to do that again so when you've got the option to export these things you may as well do it so it's just learning the configuration a second if it takes much longer I will pause it and then resume once it's sort of loaded through to the next prompt in fact I'm going to do that now I shall see you in a second okay there we go it had a bit of a funny five minutes I had to just restart the import um, so we want to choose this one that's the one we created and then we want to finish and that's imported so that's good and then we want to just select this one okay and register it yep that's fine i purposely made the names different for that so okay so those are started so what we'll find is on the data drive that we have it's obviously nothing's here it's not it's not actually here so it's obviously running from here as you can see it's actually updated the time on one of them i think yeah so what we don't really want them on there because it's a very small drive and it would be inconsistent so what we're going to do, we're going to move it and we want to move the virtual machine storage. So we want to move all of it, I, ideally because yeah, that will remove that will move the, the snapshots or checkpoints, it will move the virtual machine data and it will move the, the virtual hard disks. You can, you have other options here, you can move it to different locations, um, which is actually probably what we want to do in all fairness. Um, I did, I did just misread that. Um, and then the other one is just to move it because we want to specify potentially different locations um, and actually in all fairness probably we'll just do this um, just yeah, yeah. yeah we don't want to do that we want to move it into its own folder just because it's a crap ton easier so we call DC00 and see that also is going to move all of it into one nice one folder so we know basically we can then just copy the whole folder and basically do an export but it'll be a, you know just that much more simpler so i'm just going to pause it and then we will pick this up once it's sort of finished this and we can move on to app one
Okay, so I've actually moved DC00, so if we check it, check where the location is, the hard drive is what we're after, we can see it's actually on the F drive, and we can just verify it. DC00, and it's all the stuff's in there, so it's nice and organized. So what we'll do now is do the same to the Apple one. We want to move to a single location. That's fine. We we'll take it to F Hyper V Apple One. Select the folder and move. And as before, I will pause it and then come back when that has moved over, and we can start these up and then go from there. All right. Okay. So that is now moved over. So again, we'll just check. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you got DC there, Apple One, you got all the hard drive files, disk files, config, I don't think there's any either of those. No. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, start them both. <clears throat> and we'll just wait for them to power up and then we will then try and put them to me. So I shall be back in a second. Okay, so both the, the DC is just coming up, so we'll give it a minute, and then I will, I will pull up a session in a second. Just make sure I can just pull it over. Oh. Pull it over the other side. And then what I'll do Okay, that's not working. I may have to change my DNS settings. Yeah. Just got to change them a sec. Okay, so let's just see if we can ping the domain. Say so yeah, at 1.20, which is what it is. Let's just our test, little test domain at home. Right, uh, let's just do we can cancel that. So, now that's actually set up, what I will do is Essentially, that is now done. So we've set up, obviously we've redone the RAID, installed the disks, installed Windows, <laughs> with a little bit of difficulty, um, just because it was taking a long time to install. We've obviously then enabled Hyper-V, set up Nick Team in, um, obviously set the IPs, re-imported the, the two VMs that I backed up initially, then pointed them to the correct switch. Uh, they are online, and uh, I'll just make sure my host can ping DC00, oh, dash 4, yep, and Apple 1. So that is it. If there is anything else you would like to uh, really go through, me to go through, um, this is basically the environment that I've set up for the moment. Uh, my sort of next video I'm thinking about just documenting and maybe doing a video for you guys on SCCM would be quite a long video, probably the best part of an hour. So let me know if you guys would be interested to see this and I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to uh, comment and subscribe and uh, just let me know if anything you want to see, anything you think I could do better. Um, uh, obviously open to those suggestions and I shall see you next time. Take care. Bye. Oh and guys, real quick, I just thought I'd interject here. The other thing that obviously I will plan to go through is sort of on a host when you have a server, what sort of good practice to follow. Obviously, I'll go on the basis of a Dell server, uh, so it'll be stuff like installing the drivers and stuff. But I'll do that sort of in, in, in the next part, which uh, you may or may not see after this. Okay, so now that obviously these VMs are installed, um, this is obviously a Dell powered server. 
So the other thing we want to do is just to make sure everything is up to date. Um, and with it being a Dell server with iDRAC, we would want to install um, Open Manage, which is like a web UI, a bit like iDRAC, that allows us to see all the sort of information, very similar to iDRAC, but um, it's just a bit more specific info. Um, and it doesn't require us to, rem you know, it doesn't give us the ability to remote on initially, so it's a bit more secure if you were to leave it. If someone was to look over your shoulder, they wouldn't know that you have a different sort of IP to access iDRAC on. So we're going to head to the dead. Dell uh, support website. Drivers and downloads. You will need to pop in your serial and code, so I'll do that and come back once I've uh, got those downloads. Okay, so now I've got onto the download page. A good thing to do is always the BIOS, that's always good. So I'm just going to download that. Um, another thing, so we want to find the open manage. If I just search for that, it's the manage node, which is this one. Just to make sure that is the right one. Yep. So that's the one we want. And then we also want support assist. Now, technically, support assist is for just Dell machines, but I've had you know, a varying success with it on servers as well. So let's just do show all. It should be down here somewhere. Let's just do support. So let's do it that way. Be a bit easier. It might not show here because it's a server technology. Just do download support assist. Just download it. So, so I'm going to download, download support assist first and get that installed because the BIOS requires us to update it. So I will do that last and then we you don't need to watch me reboot it. It's just an installer, but it's just to make you aware that these practices exist. Um, it's, I know it sounds so simple, but it's something that often gets overlooked. And these are the things that potentially a lot of times will stop exploited hardware um, or hardware being exploited. So that's just going to down install. Let's just give that a minute. So. This is sort of really good for sort of Dell machines um, when you provision them. You can just put this on there, and it, a lot of manufacturers will have a, some variation. HP is called Support Assistant. Uh, Lenovo's is System Center. Those are the really the main three sort of manufacturers I sort of dealt with for the vast majority of sort of hardware. So it's just uh, downloading those files should be pretty quick, it shouldn't be too long. Looks like it's just finishing up. Always takes long when you're sat there waiting for it. I think I'll just pause it here and then resume once it completes. Okay, so that's that's all gone through. So what I'm going to do now is install Open Manage. So we're just going to unzip it. It doesn't take long normally. <laughs> um, just needs to unzip those files. Just make sure we memorize this location. Um, I should. 
they normally launch. But we may have to go to this location. That we do. So open manage. Windows setup. Fairly normal. Fairly uh, simple as well. So let's just let this load. Want to install server administrator again? It's going through all sort of all the. It's not configured. That's because we haven't enabled remote management. Now that is a personal choice. Uh, that's something that we can enable. I can show you how to do that. That's not a problem. Um, again, it's detecting a nick, and it's saying about the 64-bit SNMP agent. If we want to manage a server by SNMP, which is Simple Network Management Protocol, it's not something we want to manage the server with. Um, but you would have it on something like maybe like a, a switch just for monitoring. It's very handy for that. So it's just these are just the two network adapters it's reporting on. But there's no actual errors. It's just some some warnings, which is completely warranted. So that's absolutely fine. So it's just going to go through go through the installation. Just accept. You can read that if you like. We all know we don't. I'm just going to custom and remote enablement. So just sort of, I'm going to install obviously everything that it was whinging about. So I'm going to do traditional message format for SMP and just going to hit install. We have installed support this, but it's not showing up here. Um, I did say obviously earlier that it can be a little bit flaky, so we may just need to have a reboot for that to show. As for remote management, now there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, I always just do it on sconfig. It's quite nice and easy, which I did show earlier. So remote desktop is enabled, but remote management is also enabled. Let's just double check that. Let's just enable it, re-enable it. There are some file rules that go along with it as well, which I can also show you. See, so we're coming on inbound. It'll be right at the bottom, obviously. And there's a uh, remote management here somewhere. You also got Windows Management Instrumentation, which we want to obviously turn on. Um, those are the main ones we want to turn on. We want to turn on all these. And uh, the remote management is also done here, which again has actually been turned on, which looks is possibly related to this that's probably turned it on it normally does so it just allows us to manage the server from somewhere else uh, wmi obviously allows us to run wmi queries against it and connect to it using the command line and a wmi is a sort of any is a almost like a database of information about the system so like the motherboard the battery um anything about the hardware is quite handy for running group policies so we can say we only apply a group policy to affect laptops to dim the screen when it's at 30% or 40%. Um, obviously we don't want to do that to uh, desktops because they're always plugged in so there's no reason to conserve power. But yeah on laptops you can add the WMI filter to the policy, call it laptop you know, screen saver policy or battery saving policy sorry and then that can basically be applied um, sort of efficiently. So it's just finishing up services here. Second. Yeah, a lot of these uh, a lot of these things that just require you sitting around and waiting. It's uh, the boring stuff that is normally the most effective, and the stuff that if you master it, it um, makes all the other stuff like setting up group policy and users and groups all that much more exciting and sort of fulfilling. So the other thing we did download, if you remember, was the BIOS. Now I will run that, but then I will sort of conclude the video once I've run that because it will reboot and then that will fulfill. So as you can see here, it's server administrator. 
that loads up, gives us the, obviously it's like a, we'll ask it later, we won't worry about that for a minute. It may ask us to add this as an exception because of local configuration policy. No, it doesn't, okay. And by default, open manage logs on with a logged on user. There is a bug in some open managers where it will actually log in and all you do is log in as the user, the username and password. And it will give you some properties. I won't dig into that too much because it's um, all specific to the server, but as you can see, you can really dig down into sort of software and storage, which is I'm quite interested in. So you could go into like the connectors I can see there's obviously an enclosure black plate. Um, it just shows you the physical disks of the RAID. So as you can see, that's all the uh, <laughs> that's all the one terabyte SAS drives that I have. So, and then we have the other drive, which SAS port mode RAID one. Oh, okay, right, that's why. So we've got the one RAID, but three separate virtual disks. As you can see, they're all they're, both of these are RAID five, other than this one, which is RAID one, which is the two SSDs. So they're just mirrored images. So we will run the BIOS. And I will install it. And when it says I need to reboot, I will sort of, so as you can see actually, <laughs> I just downloaded the BIOS to be sure, but it is actually the same version, so we don't want to continue with it, um, because that will actually <laughs> waste our time. So we've obviously got the drivers installed, we've got Hyper-V installed, obviously what we do need to do is obviously put remote management software on here, or something that allows us to remotely connect, because if we're not, you know, if I wasn't at the same site as the server, and I needed to get onto it, via just the internet and not through a VPN then I would need to put something like TeamViewer or LogMean or Dameware or something that would allow remote access so that's sort of something, something that we'd need to do um, but that's something I can sort of do um, without needing to show you it's just downloading some software to put it on there that's relatively simple so that sort of concludes this video it's probably been a bit of a long one I was going to break this down into a few parts but they sort of overlap a fair amount so it'll probably be like a good 20-25 minutes video. Um, it is my f the first video I've sort of done uh, for quite you know quite a while on YouTube. Um, so obviously, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see, anything you think I could do better. Don't forget to obviously uh, subscribe if you found it helpful, um, and let me know of any ideas or anything you would like to see sort of coming upcoming videos. I do have some ideas about doing some SCCM, which is fairly advanced, um, but. I want to try and do it in like a nice easy to follow format something that is something you could just follow along with um, just so you can play around with it because SCM can be quite scary if you're not sure what you're doing um, and it's something I think will be good to have a look at uh, I also have some stuff on MediaWiki which I mentioned that the app 01 runs so we could possibly have a look at that or I could put out a new VM and go through that so hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you in the next video. Thanks.